Hey everybody, this is Joe Gilder from HomestudioCorner.com. Thanks for watching. Got a cool video today about the mix knob that has been added to a lot of the plugins inside Studio One. So if you're not a Studio One user, this is still kind of cool. Your system might use this feature, or you can kind of see the benefits of a mix knob and what it actually does for you. It's actually really cool. So let's jump into Studio One and I'll show it to you. All right, here are the drums for a song. This is just unmixed recorded drums. No processing on it at all. Okay, just straight drums. So let's say you wanted to compress the entire drum kit. That's a reasonable thing to want to do. So you pull up your compressor, you dial in your threshold, bring down, bring it down. Everything sounding a little tighter, brought out a little more of the room sound, the kick and snare have a cool feel to them now. Okay, that's that's not the point of this video, but let's say you did compress it. Well now, maybe you wanted, you like the dry signal, but you also like the compressed signal. Or let's say you want to really aggressively compress it. So we'll go with a higher threshold and let's crank that ratio, uh, the threshold, sorry, higher ratio, let's crank the threshold way down. So that sounds it's got an interesting sound. The kick is really snappy. It, it's way, way, way over processed, but it is kind of cool. Well, in the past, if you wanted to blend this heavily compressed signal with your original signal, you could do it and it's something called parallel compression, which you've heard probably a thousand times. You have essentially two copies of the signal, you route the drums to a second bus, and then you really compress that bus and then you blend it back in with the dry signal. That's fine, it just takes a few extra steps to do. And the folks at PreSonus, being the sweethearts that they are, added a mix knob to their compressor and also their EQs and their multiband compressor and probably a few others. And what this does is allows me to adjust the blend between the heavily compressed signal and the dry signal. So let's just take a listen to it. Here it is completely 0%, which is just the dry signal. And then as I move it over, we'll go to 100% wet, which would be the entirely the compressed signal. So let's say you didn't want to have a ton of that heavily compressed signal, but if you were looking at faders, for example, let's say if if this is your main signal and this is the really compressed one, you probably have that one way down like this. Well now, instead of having to man two faders and two sets of tracks and do all the routing, you can literally just do it within Studio One by adjusting the mix knob. I set this to about 26, 25%, and now I'm hearing a little bit of the really compressed signal and then most of the uncompressed drums. And this is so useful in so many ways. It's really easy to hear on the drums, but a lot of times that really compressed drum sound is great for kind of bringing out the, the tone and the ring of the drums and gives it that real organic, just kind of real vibey sound. But sometimes you need the drums to really pop through and to not be kind of squashed down by the compressor. This is a great way to do both. So you have the nice clean sounding drums coming through, but you also have that compressed sound blended together and there's no phase issues because it's all happening within the plugin and they've gone behind the scenes and make sure it's all in phase with each other. I mean, look how simple that is. So first I'm just, first I'm just compressing a uh, drum kit. Next thing I know, I'm blending back in the dry signal to make it sound awesome. And as you can imagine, with actual mixed drums, again, these drums don't have any processing on them yet. That's just the compressor. You can imagine how much more cool, <laughs> more cool, that's not even a way, how much cooler that would be uh, once you're actually getting to the point where you're mixing the entire drum kit. So this is a great tool for mixing, mastering uh, on your main master bus, on individual tracks, on buses. There's just an unending list of ways that you could use this. So if you're a Studio One user, if you haven't noticed it, update to the latest version and you'll see this new mix knob show up. And if you're not, see if your system has some sort of a mix knob. 
If it doesn't, request it to the manufacturer and uh, just use the, the tried and true method of busing things to separate aux tracks and, and processing them separately. But this is a big deal for me and hats off to PreSonus for making this one happen. All right, that's it for me in this video. If you want more tips like this, head over to homestudiocorner.com slash newsletter and you can sign up to receive daily tips from me straight to your inbox and you'll also get a free ebook. Doesn't get better than that. All right, that's it for me. See you next time.